why a full book on fasting? Why does it merit a full book? I spent years studying all of the different aspects of diet and nutrition that would work to make brains work better. And I put it all in my first big book called The Bulletproof Diet, and it included intermittent fasting. And in the past 10 years, people have lost a million pounds using intermittent fasting. Plus, it included things like lectins and plant toxins and cyclical keto, but not regular keto, all the stuff that's now coming out here. But since that time, I've seen keto devolve into a, if it's not a carb, you can eat it. And it doesn't work and it breaks people. And I've seen so many mistakes that people make from trying to oversimplify. And I realized what's the one thing that people have the biggest aversion to that has the highest return on investment of anything you can do for your health when it comes to food. And it turns out it's skipping breakfast. Because if you think about it, it's like you go to the bank and then they give you money when you walk in the door. That's because you didn't have to buy breakfast. No money, no time, no energy on breakfast. And then they're like, oh, here's some interest. You're like, but I didn't make a deposit. That's okay, because you got more energy that morning from fasting than if you had breakfast. And then over time, you don't get type 2 diabetes, cancer, heart disease, all the other bad stuff. So you're like, wait a minute. I got long-term interest, short-term interest, and I got given money instead of having to put money in. It's like a negative investment in a bank. So why don't people do it? That's why I wrote the book, so that we could figure out how to do this for 10 years, because I have enough experience with enough people. And also, the spiritual side of fasting is really important. And I fasted in a cave for four days around that. So partly is, don't try to do a spiritual fast during a workday. And here's how to make fasting easy and not painful. And if we could get people to do that, this would change so many people's lives. That's why I wrote it, even though, frankly, it's the worst book you could write in terms of topics, just because who wants to talk about not eating breakfast? Can I ask you a question about what you just said? Because I understand why you're saying it, but the energy back into the system, that's once you get used to living this way, right? Because in the beginning, it's a distraction and it's taking energy out of the system. Only correct? if you don't hack it. <laughs> and that's uh, Okay. In a normal fast, way back in the day before we had technology, you would say, oh, if I'm used to eating carbs, which humans generally weren't that used to eating carbs except in the middle of summer. Um, but we would say, this is a problem. Um, I'm going to feel like crap for two days. And then after the third day, when your body kicked into ketosis, you would suddenly not care about food and you'd have tons of energy. My supposition, having lost that 100 pounds and all of my own health problems, is that most people who are trying to hold down a job, now they have kids jumping up and down on them while they're trying to hold down a job at home. We have plenty of stress. And to tell someone who's as fat as I was, Oh, by the way, you're just not going to have breakfast. They're going to get hypoglybitchy the way I would have. They're going to not be able to do it, and it's going to be a terrible day, and it's going to take them weeks to acclimate. That is a non-starter. It is never going to happen. But thank you, biochemistry. We can turn on that third day of fasting freedom when you're in ketosis. We can do it in the morning and still get the benefits of fasting. So we can take someone who is obese, someone who has poor mitochondrial function, and we can make them fast the first morning without suffering. And over time, they get stronger and stronger and stronger. So let's skip the pain. This whole idea of self-flagellation for self-improvement, we've got to get over that. No one wants to suffer, and there is no merit in suffering. You can do a water-only fast when you're heavy and try to work <laughs> and try to deal with your life, and you probably will quit fasting after about a week, and then you'll say that didn't work. But if instead you said, I know how to take the edge off. In fact, I know how to remove the edge entirely. So I feel better than I did before the first time I tried this. Suddenly, like, oh, I can do this. And if you use the tools to help you get acclimated, all of the sudden, like, I can have breakfast or not have breakfast and my life won't change. I won't think about food. People will put a donut in front of me and I won't have to deny myself the donut using willpower. You just don't want it because you know that if I eat that, I'll have less energy. It's just not attractive anymore. That frees up 15% of the thoughts in your brain, according to a study that's in Fast This Way. Because, you know, Stephen, you and I are both heavily into neuroscience and all. And I didn't actually read how they quantified it. But they found that 15% of the average person's thoughts, this is average, not metabolically unfit person's thoughts are about what's for the next meal. If you get 15% of your thoughts back, <laughs> that's kind of a big performance upgrade. That's amazing. I can't actually believe people spend that much. I have never spent more than, you know. Yeah, but you've never I'm been hungry, fat. 
Yeah, I can empathize with that statistic, Dave, for sure. What, so in terms of adjustment... Uh, by the way, I've never seen anybody actually eat like Rian. So <laughs> it's, it's true. But, but I fast, though. That's the, that's the key. You do. You, um, it's true. You eat three meals per meal, but you fast. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's totally that's fine. If you fast, you're supposed to eat three meals for your one meal of the day, right? You got to get enough food in there. If you chronically are too low on calories, calories are how we measure energy. Like Everyone's like, I want to be on a low-calorie diet, but I want lots of energy. I'm like, guys, can you do math? <laughs> calories are where energy comes from. It's okay to eat. Just don't eat all the time. You'll be fine. Eat all the time. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.